All right, so we're gonna do a quick rundown of the parts you're gonna need for this micro. Um, so we're building the two inch Falcon Wolf Riders Bull Shark. That's this frame right here. It's a stretch frame, super light. It's got this little carbon top plate. And uh, the cool thing about this frame is that it fits a run cam micro. So you don't need to use a CMOS camera, you're using a CCD cam. So you can get that really good picture quality. And um, it's gonna be super light still with the components that we're going to be using. All these components I got from GearBest.com except for the frame. This is from Falcon Walter Riders. You can get that from FE Headquarters. Um, the flight controller ESC 4-in-1 stack is the Furry Bee Fly Tower Mini F4 flight controller. This guy's got an F4 processor on it with an integrated LC filter and OSD. Uh, it becomes preloaded with beta flight, but we're going to flash beta flight 3.21 on it, the latest. And um, the 4 in 1 ESC supports D Shot uh, 2 to 4S light bow. The 4 in 1 ESC has a, is rated for 20 amps um, constant current. The burst is at 25 amps. A couple of nice features about this flight controller is that it supports S Bus, PPM, DSMX. Uh, it's a nice 20 by 20 millimeter stack size, so it's going to fit nicely in those micro builds. And the cool, really good thing about it is that it supports 2 to 4S direct LiPo input, so you don't need any regulators on this build. Alright, so as I mentioned before, this frame fits a Runcam Micro or the Fox Hero Micro, either one. This one is the Swift 2 with the integrated OSD on board. Uh, I went with the 2.1 lens on this guy, that's my favorite lens for this little micro camera. Now for the VTX, we're going to be using the full speed TX200. This is a 48 channel, 5.8 gigahertz VTX. Uh, this supports direct LiPo input, so 2 to 4S, which is what we're going to be running on this little guy. And um, the really sweet thing about this guy is you can either mount it on the back of your micro, like so. Or what I'll probably end up doing is just kind of finding a place somewhere on the frame to uh, maybe on top of the stack, like so and just double-sided tape it on there, or mount it on, top, on the bottom of the uh, top plate. But I'll probably put it on the back of the camera if we can squeeze it in there. The RX, we're gonna be using the FreeSky XM 16-channel um, S-Bus receiver. Now, this guy doesn't have the best range, um, so I'm gonna test it out, see how good a range I can get, but um, I'm gonna be really careful with this build and mainly use it for racing and not really freestyle, um, keep it kind of close to home with this guy. Um, um, last he's been running these XMs and having some failsafe issues, so we'll give it a go, um, see how much range we can get out of it, but um, if it's not good enough, we might go to the XM Plus. For props, we're going to be running the Gem Fan 2035 um, Bullnose. These are, in my opinion, the best props for your two-inch builds. And for motors, we're going to be using the 1104 7500 HGL Tech Motors. Um, 1104 seems to be the great size for these little 2-inch builds. Anything bigger, you're going to get start getting into heavier weight and um, kind of losing the benefits of uh, the micro build. So um, anything bigger than this, you're going to be looking at more of a 2.5 inch to a 3 inch prop. So we're going to run these guys and uh, should be plenty of pop for, uh, for 2S. Maybe we can run 3S, but probably just gonna be running these 2S 450s from Tattoo. These are what I found to be the best batteries for those little micro builds. JST connector, we got a JST connector on the stack, so that's perfect. We'll probably just shorten this up a little bit. But um, these batteries have plenty of punch. Um, these are 75C and uh, perfect weight, perfect size for these little micro two inch builds. All right, so the first thing I think we're gonna do is Get the stack mounted on top of the frame here. So we're gonna take some M2 screws. These come with M2 standoffs. And um, I don't have any nylon M2 screws, so I'm just gonna use these metal M2 screws. Uh, we'll just figure out what the best length is. And with this frame, it actually has mounting for, for 16 by 16 and 20 by 20, but we're gonna be running the 20 by 20 here. So we'll just get this kind of positioned here and then we'll find the right length screw, not too long so we can save some weight. That looks pretty good. So we're just gonna get this guy situated on the 20 by 20 mounting pattern. 
and then we'll start soldering up the uh, signal wires for the motors. These little micro builds are super fast, especially with these stacks that come already pre-built. So, um, you know, if you're short on time, you're not really a fan of building, these, these 4-in-1 and ESC combos are a really good option. Definitely save you some time on the build process. All right, so that looks good. We got this mounted on here. And what we'll do is we'll just put a little bit of foam on the bottom here for the battery so that the battery is not touching those screws. So we'll just cut this down a little bit and we'll just stick this right on the frame. I'm not gonna add that much weight and it's gonna keep your battery nice and secure. Like so. All right, so we're gonna get our motors mounted onto the frame now. We're gonna be using M2 by five millimeter screws. These are the button heads. And when you're mounting these little tiny motors, make sure you still use Loctite, because these guys like to wiggle themselves loose. Uh, a lot of little vibrations on these motors, so always make sure to use a little bit of Loctite on these mounting. So we're just gonna take four per motor, put a little Loctite on there, and then we'll get these guys mounted up. All right, so now we got our motors mounted on. Let's go ahead and pop off this FC and we'll start soldering the uh, power lines for the camera, the VTX, and we're gonna throw an LED on top of this guy, this little LED here for some night racing action. Just be careful, make sure you don't lose these tiny little M2 nylon nuts. These things are easy to lose. And they're kind of hard to get off too. So I just, I just realized that um, because this FC has an OSD on it already, I can use this Runcam Swift 2 on another build and I'll actually just use a regular Runcam without the OSD. And uh, we'll use the FC on top of the flight controller and we'll show you how to get that all set up and uh, get the Betaflight integration going on that. All right, so now that we have the nuts off of the standoffs, we can go ahead and pop this off and let's take a look here. So we got our 3.3 volt for um, Spectrum. We have our 5 volt and uh, our RX for the S bus. And we have our V in, V out, 5 volt, and ground here to power the camera. And that's gonna where we're gonna run the OSD through. It's also got space for a buzzer, but on these little micros and you know, realistically any quad, you don't need a buzzer as long as you have the beacon beacon um, delay set to like one or two minutes on your ESCs using BL Heli. Um, after a minute, your ES motors will start, will start beeping and that'll be loud enough for you to hear where your quad is. So we can save some weight by removing the buzzer and just use the beacon delay on the ESCs to locate your lost mini quad. So we're actually gonna have to take the FC off, or sorry, the, the form one off as well in order to get to the solder pads on the bottom so we can power our VTX and our LED. And we're also gonna shorten up this JST a little bit because that's kind of long. All right, so we got that off. All right, so we got some nice big solder pads, which is helpful. We got the positive and the negative. So first thing we'll do is we'll shorten up this JST. So let's just measure out the distance we're gonna need to reach the battery plug. I'd rather shorten up the um, JST on the ESC rather than on the um, actual batteries. So we'll go Let's see, we could probably cut it down to right about there. So we'll just mark that off, just kind of pinch it. And then we can snip that and we'll re-solder that on. So let's go ahead and pre-tin our little JST plug here. This is gonna go on the four in one. And we'll 
we'll grab our foreign one and we'll go ahead and remove the cables that are on there already. Sometimes when you, they come from the factory, you gotta throw a little extra solder on there just to get it going. So that's good to go. So with the BTX, we're actually going to have to remove um, some of this liquid e-tape and we're going to have to uh, rearrange some of these wires so that we can run this through the OSD. So let's go ahead and do that next. So we're just going to carefully remove this goop that comes on here. All right, we can leave the power on here because we're going to run that straight to the to the foreign one, but we're going to need to remove the um, video in. That's going to we're going to reroute that from the camera to the um, to the FC that has the OSD built in. So we're just going to remove that, and actually we'll probably remove all of these, and we'll just use the run cam cable that comes with it. All right, so we'll take our camera plug and we will route that to here. So we got the the vid, and I think we're gonna. What we'll do is we'll run the um, camera sh straight off the battery power, um, just because I don't I don't want to um, stress this this VTX too much. So we'll power the camera straight off of the of the uh, foreign one ESC straight off the battery power it should be totally fine. This camera takes five to thirty six volts in. So what we're gonna do is power this guy off of here straight off of the battery voltage. So let's get this stack back together. It's gonna be like that. And what we'll do is we'll run the power and ground underneath the stack. Or actually right in between should be fine um, so let's see yeah we may need to lower the stack just a little bit because the run cam is not gonna fit I don't think let's see so if we got a camera mount the run cam's gonna sit right there, and that's gonna be pretty tight. So let's see, like that. Let's go ahead and mount the camera, and then we'll put it in place and see how it's looking. So the camera's gonna sit right in there. And the stack's gonna be like that. Yeah, we might be okay actually. I think that's plenty of camera angle. Yeah, I think we'll be alright. Okay. So now that that's good. Let's go ahead and uh, wire up the camera. So we're gonna run the power and the ground straight off the 4-in-1 ESC. So we'll just trim these to length. And then we'll tin these guys up. And then we'll just solder these directly to the foreign one. Just right on top of the battery leads, fine.
All right, we'll just throw a little extra solder on there. Looks good. All right, that looks good. So it's gonna come under the stack and then sit right there. And then the video is gonna go to the V in, which is the first hole here. So we'll go ahead and cut that to length. Turn that guy up. And then we'll throw some solder on the flight controller pads. V in, V out. And then we can just go ahead and run that wire straight to there, to the V in on the, on the uh, flight controller. So that's our camera setup. So we got V in going to the flight controller and then we have power and ground coming straight off of the battery lead. So that's good to go. Um, why don't we go ahead and get our VTX wired up now. What we'll do is we'll just mount it right on top of the FC with some double sided tape. So we'll run the power and ground um, underneath the whole stack as well. Actually, you know what, let's do it this way. Just want to make sure the button's accessible. So there's the button right there to change channels. So we'll do it like this. And then we'll come around here and power that right there. So let's just trim that up. So we'll get the power on there first. Okay, and then we'll get the ground on there. Next thing we'll do is while we're down here, we'll get our power and ground wired up for the LED. So we're just gonna use some small silicone wire, get that tinned up, and then we'll just throw that right on top of the, the VTX pad we just soldered on. All right, that looks good. So that's all we're gonna to need to do on the bottom of this. So if we want, we can go ahead and place it on the frame and then kind of see where we stand. So let's go ahead and get that on. All right, so the last thing we need to do with the VTX is get our video um, video out from the FC to the V in on the VTX. So that's the little vid pad here and the second pad on the flight controller. So we'll just take some extra yellow silicone wire we got laying around and we'll trim off two of the tips. We'll tin those guys up. And then we'll put one on the flight controller on the V out. Alright, that's in there. And then that's going to go to the vid pad on the on the VTX. So let's get that on there. Grab my helping hands. And then we'll get that on there. 
So let's, let's just double check the pad. I think it's the outside one. Yep, that's the outside pad. So farthest pad from the power and ground, that's where the OSD is gonna run to and that's gonna send our all our telemetry stats to the uh, to the video feed. Alright, piece of cake. So that's good to go. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and get our motors wired up. Alright, so we'll go ahead and tin up these uh, signal pads on the ESC very carefully. Just make sure your temperature is not too hot so you're not splattering solder on these little components. Because they're pretty delicate. Alright, so what I'm going to do is put some zip ties around the motor wires so that they stay on the arm and then we'll cut them to length. Let's trim these guys to length. So once you trim one you can just grab the other guys and just add on a couple millimeters to that length of the first cut and then it should fit on there nice and clean. So we'll just trim off these edges here. Oops. It's a little long. All right. So we'll tune these guys up. And then once those are tinned, we can just trim off a little bit of the excess. Don't need them that long. All right, so now we'll throw these on to the signal pads and just make sure you very carefully do this so you don't melt the, um, the little nylon standoffs. All right, so there's one. And the order doesn't matter because we're gonna go into BL Heli and um, change the motor direction if we have to. All right, so there's one motor. So we'll go ahead and do that to the rest of the motors and then we'll start putting this guy together. All right, so we got all of our motor signal wires soldered onto the foreign one. So we're gonna go ahead and put the FC down at this point. And we'll just secure a couple of these on there just to make sure we're good on the fit. You know, we almost forgot our RX. We kind of need that. So we'll get this guy wired up before we put that down. And then I think we can just fit that right in between the FC and the ESC. Let's take a look here. Yeah, that'll fit in there no problem. Just like that, perfect. All right, so we're just gonna take some silicone wire that we have left over from our camera. And we're gonna solder onto the S-Bus, the five volt and the ground. So now what we'll do, once we get this all set up, we'll probably put some heat shrink around this just so it doesn't touch any of the components on the inside here. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and get it wired up to the flight controller. So it looks like, let's see, here, we can take the camera off for now. All right, so we're gonna use the RC in, the 5 volt, and the ground. And we don't need that much slack, so we'll just trim these down. Let's go about 20 millimeters on there just to be safe. So the bottom is going to be our ground. It's going to be our black wire. And 
Next one's gonna be our five volt. It's gonna be our red wire. And then lastly, we have our S bus, which is our yellow wire. That's gonna go to the RC in on the flight controller. All right, so hopefully this all fits in there. It's gonna go like this. And then we're just gonna place this guy underneath here on top of the four and one. Uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and bind this up before we shove it in there. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and power this on and hopefully she all works okay. So we'll take our, let's make sure you put the antenna on to the VTX so we don't fry that. All right, just make sure nothing's touching and we'll go ahead and plug her in. Make sure these wires aren't touching. All right, here we go. All right, so we have power on the FC. We have all the signals on the motors. We have the VTX powered on and we have the RX powered on. So I'm gonna grab my radio and we'll get that all bound up. In D16 mode, I had it on D8. All right, so we'll try that again. All right, that looks good now. We got the red light blinking. It's a power cycle, make sure we have the green light. All right, so we got a successful bind. VTX looks good, so now we'll throw the camera on and we'll make sure the video is good before we seal it all up. All right, so we're gonna attempt to get this guy on Fat Shark 4. So to change channels, we just hit this little button on the side. And when the, red, when the light's solid, that means that it's on eight. So we'll go one, two, three, four. Okay, now that's on four. Um, and then to change the band, we just hold it for three seconds. One, two, three. And we're on the light number four, which I think is Fat Shark. Oops, three. One, two, three, four. Three seconds, changed band. One, two, three. All right, that looks good. I think we're on the th Third light, so let's just double check that. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ha! Ah. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that should be four. How do we get this thing on the right band? <sighs> it says hold for three seconds. One, two, three. Okay, we'll let that chill. One, two, three. There we go. Okay, so I was holding it too long. One, two, three. There we go. One, two, three, let go. Okay, so it looks like the third light is fat truck. Let's try the other ones. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, that, I have video there too. Okay, that looks good. So you, the trick is you hold for three seconds, let go before the all the lights power up. And then to change channels, you just tap it. So let's try to change the power. So we'll hold it for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that looks like full power maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, I'm guessing that's full power. We got all the LEDs on. Looks like we're on the right band. Let's just double check that first LED, see what channel that is. One, two, three. 
Oops, one, two, three. I'm gonna guess the first one's fat shark. That's usually how it works. F A E R B E. Um, so yeah, let's let's say that's good. So we have video. Um, let me throw my other run cam on. I was just checking to make sure the camera wasn't the problem, but the camera's good. So we'll throw this guy on. Make sure that camera's working. So we got our OSD, we have voltage, we have the name, we have the fly time. So it looks like a Betafly OSD. So we'll go ahead and go through Betafly and get that set up next. So we're looking good. All right, so we're gonna take our FC and we're gonna plug in our micro USB. So we got connection and let's go ahead and flash this guy. But first we're gonna figure out which firmware it's running. Looks like the Omnibus F4, okay. Let's disconnect that. Firmware flasher. We're gonna go to Omnibus F4. And then we're gonna select 3.21. And then we'll go to load, load firmware local, or sorry, load firmware online. And then we'll go ahead and flash that. Oops. All right, we're flashing. All right, so we have our arm switch set to this guy here, so if we look in the modes tab, you can see that it's arming, so that's good to go. And that's all we need to do for the mode settings. Um, we're gonna go into PID tuning, go into filter settings, and do all the dynamic filtering. So we're gonna turn off notch filter one and two, save that, and um, just double check that we have dynamic filtering on, anti-gravity on. And then we can go into the OSD and turn off all this extra stuff that we don't need. We just need main battery voltage. And we'll do flight time. So there's no current sensor. All right, so now that we've confirmed that everything is working, we're gonna put some heat shrink over our little RX here. And then we're gonna stick that down onto the uh, flight controller, uh, underneath the flight controller onto the foreign one. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll just we'll put this actually underneath, underneath the frame here. I think we'll be okay with the battery strap on top of that. So we'll run the antenna out the back, and then we'll just slide this guy in there. All right, that looks good. Let's make sure the camera fits. Yep, should be just fine. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and secure the flight controller down. All right, we're almost done here. Now we just need to get our VTX mounted on top of the FC. So we're gonna just have this guy, let's see. We'll go like so. So we can still access the push button. Let's make sure we can clear the top plate. Okay, looks good. All right, so we'll take some more double-sided tape. Let's 
Okay, that looks good. Just make sure we can clear the, the top plate. So now we need to just power the LED here. So we're gonna run this, let's just run it right through the middle of the stack. We have room, no room. Okay, we'll go around this side. Okay, that'll work for now, so we'll just have it like that. And, all right, so at this point we can grab our standoff, so we're gonna need 20 mil standoffs. Got like a six mil nylon screw, we'll get this back one on first. Let's see, we'll go around the side of the JST. Now we can power our LED, so we'll just uh, peel off some of this coating on the wires that we have connected to our battery power, and we'll tin those guys up. Um, so to mount the antenna, I think what we'll do is we'll put a zip tie around the LED and up. So let's get this guy out of the way. Go like that, and then we'll put some heat shrink around that guy. So, should just sit like this. Maybe a little bit thicker. That'll do the trick. So yeah, we'll just heat shrink that there. And we'll tighten that up. And then for the RX antenna, we'll do the same thing off the arm. We'll just take another zip tie here and we'll throw this out the back. Actually, you know, we'll put it right here at the top just to get some better range on this little XM. Let's go like this. Let's run this guy. We'll wrap it around the back standoff a couple times just to uh, get rid of some of that slack. Let's see here. Yeah, that should be good. And then we'll just grab some skinny heat shrink. trick all right and then that'll just go on top here around the zip tie and around the antenna 
And that should be good. So we're gonna shrink those up and then we'll throw the props on. All right, so now we'll just throw our props on. We're gonna use the uh, GemFan 2035s. And we're gonna use two mounting screws for these guys. Just using the M2 nuts that come with the props. All right, there's one. Get four more of these on and then we'll be ready to test fly. This guy will put a battery strap in and then we should be good to go.